So the whole purpose of this video is just to get you to start thinking about tools in different ways. Like just because something is called the retopology pen doesn't mean you uh, you can only use it for retopo. That's, that's kind of the whole purpose behind Modo is that it's has a bunch of little tools and they all tend to interoperate with each other. So I'm um, taking this retopology pen uh, as our example, um, I'm going to show you how I use it for general modeling tasks, specifically shapes that are kind of weird to model or stuff that I need to, you know, to follow off a reference image like lettering or something like that. So uh, we'll get into it and take a look. So the first question to answer is, where is the topology pen? Well, traditionally, by default, it's on the topology tab. So if you flick over to the topology tab, you can see the tools for this appear over here and the top one is the topology pen. Now I don't want to have to come in here, obviously, you know, every time I want to use it. So I've got it bound to a, uh, or rather I've got it on a, a pie menu flyout right here at the top. So I can call it up from anywhere and activate it. Now the way I did that you know, as a quick refresher of Modo is pressing the F5 key brings up your command history and uh, whatever you do now, you can see the command that Modo is using to do that. So if I have this window open and I hit the topology pen, uh, you can see this command down here that appeared. That's the command you need to bind to a hotkey or put on a Pi menu or, or whatever to activate this tool. So that's really all I wanted to show here. So uh, with that in mind, you know, while I'm modeling, I can pull up my flyout and activate the pen whenever I need to. So uh, now that we know where it is and how to bind it to something, Let's talk about how to use it. Okay, so let's pretend that I had to, or I was given a task to model this logo. Uh, if you're a 3D artist, you probably recognize this as the ZBrush logo or the ZBrush dude or whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's a lot of curves and a lot of wackiness in here. And uh, this is the kind of task that I would break out the topology pen for. So. Now, uh, before we get into this, uh, it is important to note that uh, really what the topology pen is doing for me is speeding up the edge extrusion workflow. So let's say that I uh, toss the polygon in here, turn on wireframe, and I you know, hit Z and I shift click and I shift click and I keep going along and I can rotate these and move them along and I can get you know uh, that extrusion sort of workflow going on, but it's not exactly fluid. And as we'll see here in a second, uh, the topology pen kind of automates that process for you. So to build this logo with the topology pen, I would use my flyout. Well, I, uh, that isn't true. The topology pen needs something to chew on first. So we'll throw a quad in here just to get things started. Now I'll activate the topology pen. Now by default, when the topology pen comes up, you are going to have to watch out because it, it does want to snap to the background constraints because that's what it's doing it's trying to retopo now mine's not set that way because i was just using it but but if yours is go down here and turn off the background constraints to set it to off because you don't want it snapping to anything now, you do want snapping up here because that allows verts to snap together we'll get to that in a second but now that i have my quad laid down and my background reference image i can grab the quad put it in position uh, grab the verts by hovering over them and just pull them into position now I can just shift click on an edge to pull it out and, you know, and manipulate the verts that are underneath uh, without having to change tools or do anything weird. And I can basically just trace out this shape using as much, as much geo as I need to, you know, going back and refining verts just by clicking and dragging on them. And it's really kind of a nice process. Like it's pretty soothing <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Um, it's one of those kind of Zen things. You can just kind of like zone out while you're tracing the shape. And this is uh, the bulk of what I use. This is the default mode, which is move. Uh, the pen has other modes that we're not going to get into because I wanted to show the base modeling functionality. Uh, you do it. You, know, you do have to watch when you get into tiny corners how the snapping behaves because sometimes it'll try to snap to verts that you don't want it to snap to and that kind of thing. But speaking of snapping, uh, once you get you know your shape basically ironed out, and we'll add another one in here. Uh, 
uh, when you shift click and drag off of it towards another face, see, uh, see how it kind of snaps there? It's like bang, bang. Uh, it wants to snap to nearby geometry. So it's super handy that way. So basically you just lay out your shape like I'm doing here. And you know, I'm gonna pause the video and finish this off and I'll be right back. So as you can see, I finished laying this out and some of this stuff looks a little off right now. That's because I already hopped into sub D mode and saw how it was subdividing and it didn't quite match up with the logo. So I had to tweak it. So if I hit tab to turn on sub D's and then I'm going to jump into an orthographic view just to make this obvious. So there's the backdrop image of my mesh on top of it. And I still have the topology pen activated. Now you can see with sub D on, um, you can see exactly how it's going to obviously deform. And you can zoom in here and move the mesh around while you're in sub D. Uh, topology pen doesn't care whether you're you know, working with a cage mesh or you're working with a subdivided mesh. So with the, uh, the sub D on, you can go ahead and tweak and make sure that you're hitting all the right curvature notes and all that. Um, let's see. Now, you know, another trick you can do is if you turn on a wireframe in here, you can see through your mesh to the background and make sure that you're lining it up correctly. So you know, there's options, you know, depending on your level of you know, perfectionism and how you want to do things. Uh, Topology Pen has some nice features, like uh, uh, one quick one I'll show you is holding shift and middle clicking will insert uh, an edge loop. So if you need to add more geometry or more tightness to a corner or something, you can do that really simply just by throwing in an edge. And uh, yeah, that's basically the topology pen for modeling. And just to show you the end result of this, uh, when I get done, if I hide my backdrop item, yeah, there's my ZBrush shape. So if I grab this and give it a little bit of thickness, as you can see now we've suddenly taken that shape out to give it some weight. Okay, now we have a 3D model of the ZBrush thing. You know, it needs some tweaking. You know, this edge, you know, this this edge here looks a little janky and stuff like that. But you know, on the whole, that was a hell of a lot faster than trying to box model it or something like that. So uh, hopefully you can take some value away from this and I'll see you next time.